right, so one of the most common and one of the most useful things to do in chemistry is to make dilutions. And so um, today we're going to show you how to make a dilution using a burette. Before we get to that, I want to talk about the dilution formula, which often is written M1V1 equals M2V2 or you may see C1V1 equals C2V2 and in this equation the M stands for molarity and the V stands for volume and because you can use the formula for more units than just molarity a lot of times you see it written as C1V1 equals C2V2 where the C just stands for concentration in whatever units you want to use. So in this case what we're going to do is we're actually going to look at the dilution of a sample from 4 milliliters to 10 milliliters and um, we're going to say that we have a, a one molar sample and so let's define the variables here so in this case M1 is going to be the original molarity or the original concentration of our sample so that's going to be one molar and V1 is going to be the original volume and we're going to do a four milliliter to ten milliliter dilution so the initial volume is going to be four milliliters the final molarity or M2 is what we're going to solve for so we don't know that yet the final volume V2 is going to be 10 milliliters so how do we go about solving for M2 um, the easiest way to do that is to write the equation so M1 V1 equals M2 V2 and then since we want to isolate M2, we're going to divide both sides by V2. And so what that's going to do is cause V2 to cancel out on the right side. So we're going to have M1 V1 over V2 equals M2. And from here, all we have to do is simply plug in the numbers. So M1 is 1 molar and V1 is 4 milliliters and V2 is 10 milliliters so when we solve for M2 M2 is going to be 0 0.4 molar when using a burette to make dilutions first take note of the initial reading of the burette. The initial reading does not have to be at zero, but it does have to be below the zero mark so that you can get an accurate measure. Since we want to dilute four milliliters to ten milliliters, first we're going to deliver about four milliliters from the burette into a test tube. At the end of the delivery, we'll take note of the final burette reading. Then we'll use the burette containing the water to deliver about 6 milliliters of water, bringing the total volume of liquid in the test tube up to 10. After we've delivered 6 milliliters of water into the test tube, we'll take a final burette reading and record this in our notebook.